Welcome. We're going to walk through how we use Okta workflows to work with our Workspace ONE environment to update some attributes for users. So it's not too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with Okta, and what we're going to do is we're going to focus on when a user is added to a specific group. We're going to do some stuff. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do an if. just to make this kind of fun. And so what we do is if the user if the user is added to Centrex employees so if the user is added to Centrex employees this is what we're going to do. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to wait. And this is really important because we want to make sure we wait for an hour to make sure everything is done and correct because what will happen is is that so the next thing that we want to do here is that we're going to use Okta to actually read the user account and what's key about that is that you want to make sure you wait long enough so that it actually can do what you need it to do. And so inside of here, we'll read the object quid. We're going to read the primary email. And I think that that is probably good, right? Yeah. So we do that. And so then we come over here. We grab the Okta users user ID. We pop it in there. So we're already off to a great start. Another one of the things that we're going to actually do, because of some of the things that we're doing, is we need to actually do a replace as well. So what we're going to do here, and I'll explain real quick why we're going to do it, is that we do the replace because what we have to do, because this is federated, we have to actually switch our account, the account back to the on Microsoft account, make changes, and then move it back. And so I'll show you what we do here. It's pretty easy. So what we do is we're going to do is we're going to do a look. We're going to take this here, right? And actually, first, let's uh, let's add one more field here, just to make this great. So we're going to add in the username, hit save, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to pass in the username, and then once we pass in that username, what we're going to say is we're going to tell it to look for centrex.com and replace it with centrex.onmicrosoft.com, and then that generates this result text. So from there, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna add in another weight. And the weights are important because you wanna make sure you leave enough time so that you can kind of work with this properly. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use Office 365's admin. And we're gonna use the update user function. And so by using the update user function, what we're gonna tell it to do. And so what we care about here is we care about on-premise immutable ID, user principal name, I believe. And I think that's good. I have to, we'll walk it back. But so from here on this next portion, to update the user, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the username. Because it's still its normal self. And then we're going to pass in the result text from, from the uh, replace to update that user's information. So by doing this, it actually makes life a lot easier because this is now going to update the user and it's going to move them over to the onmicrosoft.com. So then from here, we'll do another, we're going to do another 10 minute wait because we want to make sure that we give time, proper time for things to replicate and all that stuff. And so the next piece of it, and it's very similar to what we just did, but a little bit different. We're going to go back to update user again. And this will be fun. Okay, so user principal name, on premise readable ID. So now what you're going to do is you're going to actually pass the result text in because that's now what the person's user principal name is. So you're going to pass that in there. And then for the on-premise immutable ID, 
you are actually going to come over here to where that object quit is from when you did the read user, and you're going to pass it in there. And that's because in Azure AD DS, it has a different uh, object quid than Azure AD does. So what we're doing is we're actually updating that. And so you, we're going to do that portion, right? Right. So that's that's all good. And then we're going to add one more wait for 10 minutes. And then the last thing we're going to do is, of course, we need to move it back, right? Right. So we're going to do our update user one more time here. I just like having both of them in there, but you probably could just do the one that matters at that point in time. So you're going to now what you're going to do is, is you're going to pass that result text as the user ID, right? But now, under the user principal name, you're going to actually put that original username from the read user as the user principal name. And so, and so like, you can just leave the other one blank, it doesn't really matter. And you can do this in a lot of different ways. Like, I've done ones where I'm going to do one group for one if, another group for the other if. So say you want to pass different things, you want to add them to different groups, whatever you want to do. But this gives you an idea of how you can now use Octa workflow to do some great things. And this is how I was able to eliminate a manual process and our whole transition on our Workspace ONE cloud-only environment.